Hi, my name is Anissa Jordan of the Jordan Law Firm, where I'm the founder and principal. I primarily practice in the area of criminal, DUI, and traffic law. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, two things. One, uh, some tips on things that would be applicable, I think, to any practice area, and then some issues or tips specifically related to DUIs in criminal cases. So the first thing I would like to discuss is how do you communicate with clients during this time? Uh, obviously you have the phone, text messages, most clients, uh, most attorneys do have access to a phone, so you can obviously do phone calls or text messages. But sometimes uh, when you're meeting with an individual for the first time, or just maybe the nature of the case, you do want to have uh, a virtual in-person meeting with that person. And there are several apps and applications in general on the computer or your phone that you're able to use to do that. Uh, you have Facebook Messenger, um, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, Zoom, uh, and WhatsApp. I have used all of those before. I'll just tell you a couple of reasons why you may want to use a one over the other. So one of the services that you may be aware of is Zoom. I've uh, used that, I've been a part of Zoom with a lot of court hearings within court. Uh, meeting with clients, though, I typically try to use Google Hangouts. It's a lot more simpler to use. Um, most people have a Google account at this point or are familiar with Google. And so if you have a Gmail account, uh, it's usually on the left side of the screen, there's a button for Google Hangouts. Typically, there's no, uh, there, there isn't a time limit to have those meetings. So that is one, one good way to be able to meet with someone virtually. Another uh, service I use is FaceTime. That uh, is on your iPhone. Most people, again, have iPhones. You're able to simply look at the number in your contact, hit the FaceTime button, and you're able to talk. Uh, but again, this is just usually applicable to only uh, Apple iPhone users. So another app that I think is maybe even better than that, it's called WhatsApp, that's W-H-A-T-S-A-P-P. -P. And you're able to download that to your phone. And the great thing about that is all, it also has video conferencing, but uh, you can use it on both Androids and iPhones. And it's pretty good, uh, works pretty well. The quality is pretty good. Uh, so any of those, those methods, again, Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, those are things you can use to meet with someone virtually. I do realize that everyone does not practice in a bigger area or Chicago. And so some of our rural areas, um, this may be a little harder to do. I would suggest maybe having someone go maybe to the McDonald's that's nearby. Sometimes you're able to still be able to access their Wi-Fi and be able to uh, communicate that way with a client or the client be able to communicate with you. Also, if your client does not have internet, I know at least in the Chicago area for sure, they're uh, offering people the ability to get online through Comcast for free. So those are some things that you can suggest to your clients or that you yourself could use to meet with people virtually. So the next thing I want to discuss with you is how can you continue to uh, generate business during this time? I know it's very difficult for a lot of attorneys right now. Uh, one of the best ways I think you can reach out to the individuals is through social media marketing. Here at my firm, we were doing a lot of that before, but now we've ramped it up. Most people are at home now. They're either working from home. You have uh, young adults who are working from home, and there's a lot more, a lot more extra time, a lot more engagement with social media channels. So it's an excellent time to really put, put yourself out there on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, all those social media sites, and all those, though those may not turn into money immediately, if you're constantly in those news feeds, you're constantly on that Instagram story. When the time comes, even either now or after the pandemic, you're gonna be the attorney that they're gonna think of no matter what the area it is. So it's a really good thing to, to really get involved in if you haven't before. It's relatively easy. You don't have to post anything groundbreaking. It could be just Happy Monday. Every Wednesday, for example, I post a social media, uh, a social media post that says Happy Hump Day. Every Friday, I post one thing that says TGIF, and on Monday, I always try to do something motivational uh, that's a new start, a new week. So that's one thing that you may want to try. A couple, of, uh, a couple of software or apps that I use to help me with my social media is a uh, product called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. It's, it's relatively 
affordable, um, depending on what program you get, but usually about 10 to $12 a month. And it can help you design different posts, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, things like that. And then I also use something called Hootsuite. It's a scheduler. So I'm able to say on Saturday, for example, I'm going to plan all my posts for the upcoming week and schedule those. And then when the time comes, Hootsuite will send them, send them out. A second way that you may want to reach out to, uh, to prospective clients is to actually send emails, phone calls to those individuals, not only to check on them, but to just let them know that you're still in fact in business, let them know that you're able to meet with them virtually if they need, need those services. And so I've reached out to both existing clients and past clients via email to number one, check out how they're, how they're faring during this time. And also just to let them know that we're still available to answer questions even if it's not specifically in, in, in this area of law. A third way you can drum up business during this time is to actually learn a different practice area, something that a lot of attorneys would like to do, but we're usually so busy with our existing practices that we don't have the opportunity to, to do so. Uh, if you're a member of Illinois State Bar Association, there's excellent programs uh, on the website. You have 15 hours of free time to be able to take a a lot of CLEs in a lot of different areas. So it's a good time to uh, learn a different practice area that may not be as impacted as criminal DUI traffic lawyers are uh, with courts being closed and COVID-19 and everything associated with that. Recently, I spoke with a colleague that practices estate planning. And during this time, he has seen an increase in his business because during this time, people are uh, unfortunately losing individuals or finding themselves in the hospital and so wills, uh, getting those in place or guardianships for, uh, for individuals or clients is a very important thing. So I know that's something that I've tried to uh, learn from our ISBA website and other areas is elder law and wills and trusts and estates because I have received calls in those areas. So maybe again, using this time to uh, take advantage of some of the CLE offered to learn a different practice area so that not only could it perhaps get you through when things are being slowed down here in the criminal practice area is something that you can also rely on once this is all over to maybe uh, expand your practice. Um, the last thing that you may want to do when you're doing perhaps your social media posting is to tie it in specifically with COVID-19. I'm not a SEO expert, but as you can imagine, when people, people are doing a lot of searching on Google for things related to coronavirus, COVID-19, so maybe having some posts that are specifically related to that and not maybe even necessarily related to law, the practice of law itself. It could be these are the top things that the CDC says you can do to keep yourself protected and maybe just put your website on the bottom of that. That may make them say, oh, this is great information from this attorney. Let me just take a look at their website I find that most individuals, uh, especially millennials at this time who are hiring at least my firm a lot, is they want you to just give them information. And then you build that trust with them. And then perhaps if they need your services or someone who needs your services in the future that they know, they will contact you because you're kind of reaching out to them, not just in an advertising type matter, but things that are important to uh, the world, important to our state and to our city. So that would be my fourth suggestion and how you could perhaps drum up some more business for your firm. So another uh, concern that I know some individuals have, especially solo practitioners, is that we're away from our office just like many other people are. We're working from home and our scanners, our faxes, our copier machines may be back in our office or perhaps you live a, a greater distance from your office. And so some things that you could maybe use during this time, um, for example, for scanners, there's an app called Tiny Scanner that you can download to your smartphone. Uh, so you're essentially taking a picture with your smartphone and it turns into a PDF. And you're able to email that uh, just like you would if you had an actual scanner. Adobe Sign is another program that works really well. You can draft documents, sign, uh, send it over email. Uh, you will get a notification once the person has received the email, they'll sign it, sign the PDF document and send it back to you. So those are some methods that you can use for office administration. And then if you unfortunately have been in a position where you've had to maybe lay some of your administrative stuff off, 
there are virtual receptionist services that you can use that could maybe still answer your phone. So one of the ones that we use here is Abby Connect, but there are several different services and just depending on what you need for your law practice, that may be a, a resource for you to continue to have someone answer your phone and have uh, someone be able to assist callers when they're calling you and you're not able to pick up at the time. So as I mentioned, I practice, I practice criminal and DUI law uh, traffic defense. And one of the issues that we've had here in this practice area is the myriad of court orders uh, pertaining to what we need to do with respect to going to court. If you practice just in one county, it's not as bad because you can just look at that county's website, look at that order. But many criminal defense attorneys, DUI defense attorneys practice in many different counties and there are many different orders in place and they don't always coincide. So one of the places I would say is go to the Illinois Supreme Court's website. They have all the orders throughout not only Cook County and Chicago and the immediate surrounding areas uh, throughout Illinois. So when a, a, a courthouse or a chief judge of a circuit issues a new order, they also send it to the Illinois Supreme Court and you're able to see those orders to see what it is that you need to do to continue to practice in court for that particular courthouse. One of the biggest issues that DUI defense attorneys have run into is the petition to rescind statutory summary suspension. There are certain timelines uh, where things need to be filed, where uh, the, the respondent is entitled to have a hearing and those uh, the fouling deadlines and the timing for those have been a little bit all over the place depending on what county you're in. As a general matter, if uh, you have a client whose license is uh, suspended for DUI, you can still file a petition to challenge the suspension of the driver's license. What you need to do, the process you need to follow is what varies. So um, some courthouses are allowing you now to file that through an email. Some are, for example, in the Daily Center, it's my understanding that attorneys can go in, there's a file stamp a machine outside of the clerk's office, you can file stamp it and then deliver a copy upstairs to the state's attorney's office. So you definitely, again, wanna look at those orders to see what those uh, orders are for that specific jurisdiction that you're in. But you want to make sure you're maintaining the client's right to have that hearing in case um, something goes wrong later. You want to make sure you have that on file. Uh, a couple of the issues that individuals or attorneys have been facing is that they have gone into courthouses and although they've read the, the, the order, it has um, been hard to still get their petition filed. And so you have people whose license or licenses are still being suspended but they're not having access to that remedy to challenge that suspension of the license. So one of the things that you, as a criminal defense, DUI defense attorney are gonna be concerned about during this time is what's gonna to happen to uh, the statutory summary suspension of driver's licenses when they are arrested for DUI. Number one, you still wanna file those petitions and the process to file that petition is going to really depend on what courthouse you're located at. So if you're at the Daily Center, it's my understanding now that they have a file stamping machine outside of the clerk's office. You're able to file stamp that and then send it or take it upstairs to the state's attorney's office so that you have that filed for the appropriate date. Uh, I just, before coming to record this, this uh, session today, I just learned that Kane County is now allowing online uh, online submission of petition to rescinds. So just make sure you, you're looking at the court order for the courthouse that you're in to determine when you can file those. It's very important. Um, one of the concerns is that in some counties, when you're filing those petition to rescinds, you're required as the, the defense attorney to, to subpoena the officer. And in some cases, officers are not showing up to those court dates and the state is getting continuance. And the issue in that is that the, um, the, if, the, if, the, if the state's attorneys need more time to answer that, then 
that time is not going to be accounted against them for the statutory summary suspension uh, time period for them to have a hearing. The second issue that criminal defense attorneys are facing right now is the uh, discovery rules. So it's always been on the books that we are not allowed to share discovery with our clients. So that's reports, uh, videos, we're able to talk to them about it, but we can't give them the actual copy of those documents. And so the reason why that has been an issue, particularly with DUI cases, is that a lot of times we're going to have video of the client's driving, the client's performance on those field sobriety tests. And so a lot of times those are videos that your client is going to want to watch and you as an attorney are going to want them to watch it. So we're trying to navigate how to maybe relax those rules or what methods we could possibly use. I know the Traffic Law Courts Section Council is in the process of trying to put something together within ISBA to maybe address the issue of the attorneys being able to still uh, meet our ethical obligations to share information to, with our clients, but to keep ourselves safe, not having to meet in person. So that's one additional thing to, to kind of be on the lookout, make sure you're kind of following um, the ISBA website and, and information as to what we need to do with respect to the discovery in this time. Perhaps the biggest issue that criminal defense attorneys are facing during this time is the uh, tolling of uh, time that the state has to give a defendant a trial once he has demanded a trial. So um, as you know from the orders, uh, there are no jury trials or any trials of any kind that are occurring right now. Clients are able to come in if they want to plead guilty but they cannot have trials. So you could have a situation in where uh, an individual's in, in jail waiting for his trial or her trial that she's demanded and she's not able to get that trial. And the, the time period is not uh, ticking forward for that, that individual. The Supreme Court of Illinois issued an order uh, basically saying that if there are continuous relate, continuances related to COVID-19 that those times won't account against the state. So you may have someone, for example, who was arrested in February and because of the continuance dates, he may not even get a second court date until well into June. If he's demanded trial, he won't be able to have his trial before June and that person could very well um, have to wait quite, quite a few uh, months before he's able to have his constitutional right to trial so with the speedy trial uh, provisions uh, being told by the Illinois Supreme Court or, or the Illinois Supreme Court granting uh, the chief judges of different circuits to in fact toll those trial periods, you're gonna have an issue where you have some uh, defendants who may be in jail for months at this point who want a trial, who are unable to have a trial because of what is going on. I think and I suspect after this is all over, you're definitely going to see a lot of motions and a lot of litigation behind this, this issue. What's interesting is that uh, in a lot of courts, I know Cook County in particular, you're able to plead guilty. So they are opening for you to be able to plead guilty. And the concern there is that you're gonna have defendants who maybe were asking for a trial, but because of concerns of contracting COVID-19, they're going to plead guilty. And so, that is something that I think, again, we're going to see a lot of litigation about moving forward, how this will impact uh, the practice of law, uh, criminal law in the future. I just want to thank you so much for taking a moment to watch, uh, watch this presentation. If you want additional resources, the first place I would suggest is go to Illinois State Bar Association's website. Uh, not only are there CLEs there, there's a ton of information and videos like this that may be applicable to different practice areas, uh, all practice areas. It's just a great resource in general. Uh, visit the Illinois Supreme Court website as well. It has all the orders throughout the state. Uh, so that's another good place to look at for uh, resources on what you need to do in court, what courts are allowing. This is a rapidly changing situation. So definitely want to stay up to date in the Illinois State Bar Association, the Illinois Supreme Court website are great places to make sure that you're staying up to date. So again, thank you for joining me today and stay safe and social distancing.